Now that we have all of our parts for the basic functionality of this forklift, we can start to look at establishing constraints between these parts. Constraints are going to specify how each part is going to be related to other parts within the system. So you're typically going to be creating constraints between pairs of parts and then specifying along which axis these parts can move in relationship to each other, whether or not there's any limits to that movement, and how that movement is going to be controlled, whether it's going to be a free movement, a movement that's going to be motorized, or one that's going to be locked, meaning it's going to be driven by a specific stream of data to specify its current position at any given point in time. So within the assembly, what I'm going to be doing is selecting pairs of different parts and then establishing the relationship between them. We can see the list of all the different relationships under the toolbox in both the common constraints section and the advanced constraints section. So we can see we have a good 20 to 30 different constraints that can be used to apply to each of the different uh, pairs of parts that we're going to have within our model. Now, to be able to create that relationship, the easiest way is to select both parts within the assembly, then specify which constraint we want to apply. Now, we're first going to be clicking on the part that's going to be moving, and then as the second one, we're going to specify the part that we're moving relative to. So if I'm looking at my wheels, I'm going to choose here the right wheel and then the body and I'm selecting both of these by holding down the control key on my keyboard. Now once I have both of these selected, I'm going to double click on the hinge constraint. So the hinge is going to be a constraint where one part moves in one axis relative to the other part that we select. Now similar to how we created the convex mesh, we get a dialog box that appears when we go in to create that constraint. And so the very first thing that we can do is specify what would be the name of this constraint. Of course, you can always leave it as constraint, but as you start to create multiple of these constraints in the system, it's better to give them good names. So I'm going to come in here and say that this is the right wheel constraint. Uh, we can see the type is hinge, and that was determined by what I clicked on in the toolbox. And then the two parts that I selected, part one and part two, are reflective of what I had selected here inside of the tree. Now, in terms of positioning, typically, as long as you've started from a good 3D model, you won't need to actually move the position of the constraint. It's going to look at where is the center of the part that's moving and put the uh, center here of the constraint at that point. If you do end up with a model that has issues with positioning, you can actually correct where the center should be by using the graphics gallery. Now in this case, I don't need to worry about that. What I do need to look at is what is going to be the primary axis for that rotation. So here I'm going to use the little button with three axes next to primary axis to specify on which axis I want to move. Now we can see here I have the Y axis along where the wheel is. So what I really want to choose here is plus Y as my movement axis. When I click OK, I'm going to see that for my wheel, that pink arrow is going to indicate what is the movement, uh, the axis along which the movement will take place. Now I can do the same thing on the other side between the left wheel and the body. And so once again, I'm going to choose a hinge constraint. I'm going to give it a good name. And I'm going to say that it's also going to be going along the plus y axis. Now you may be tempted to look at doing it the other way, at choosing minus y. But you'll see that if you do that, they're both going to have their different movement pointing at each other. And the net result is that they're going to be generating or receiving data in opposite directions. So as one moves forward, it would generate positive numbers, and at the other one would generate negative values. So that's not what we typically want. We want to have all of the wheels being aware of the world in the same way. And so we will go in and choose plus y here for the movement of this wheel. Now, if we know we're going to be creating multiple constraints of, a, of the same type, we can actually click Keep Open on Done, and then that will let us fill this in for multiple constraints until we're completely done. 
Uh, in this case, I'm going to just keep creating these separately, but I wanted to explain what this field can do. So as a third constraint, I'm going to choose my rear wheels. Now, I will not choose body here for the other part for the constraint. Instead, I'm going to be choosing caster pivot. And so as I do that, I'm going to have the wheels spin relative to their parent, which will be the pivot that we'll use to be able to do steering. So I'm going to choose a hinge once again. I'm going to call that rear wheels. And I'm going to go in and choose the same plus y axis. So now if we look at the back, we can see that we have one, two, three constraints that have been created for each of these elements. Now the last one we're going to need here is going to be to create a relationship between the pivot and uh, the body. And that's going to be one more hinge. And I'm just going to call it simply pivot in the back. And now in terms of the axis, in this case I do want to leave the default of plus Z because that's going to be spinning in place to be able to do steering on the machine. So what we want is that vertical uh, Z axis primary axis. So that's going to be from this point uh, rotating it along that vertical line that we see here.